Like my two previous speakers, it's a great honour to be here and it's wonderful to know that Shakespeare's being brought into the world, are, well, mixed both commercially and made me even more visible here. Um, mine is really just a little short. I was asked for, for showing my work for the theatre and what I had about, what, a week ago. So it's part of a, a sort of lecture that I have about my life and how I got into, well, mainly in opera in America. So I'll um, let the slides speak for themselves. Um, main, first of all, the fact that I started off as a textile designer and the designs could come from, could be influenced by all sorts of things. At the moment, I'm wearing a recreation of the one that you can see there on Natalie Wood that we've just brought out. But I suppose uh, the, the yellow coat that you see here was actually worn by Irene Worth in Tiny Alice. That's a button flower design, and I have a wonderful um, friend here in this, in Grace. You might see her around, and she's wearing the button flower design. This, was, this dress was influenced by Elizabethan cut silk in the Victorian Albert Museum, and I did this in 1971. And it's still one of my favorites, and I suppose it's a precursor to punk, but it was influenced totally by the cut, cut bodices and sleeves that I saw in the v and I can assure you I didn't sell many. <laughs> Whoops, I'm not very good at this, I don't think. Oh. And this is um, a, a, based on a, a shawl and in, in my prints. And I cut out around the edges. And it's very funny because someone once said, well, did you influence Galliano in his transparent dresses? And I said, well, I never thought of that as transparent because she had a body stocking on underneath. These are feathers that I drew. Um, that They were the North American Indian Museum and it influenced me using designs with, with feathers, but also going back to the, the intricate work that I compared with the Elizabethan work at the time. And this was a feather kaftan that I made. This one's called Snail Flower, and this is 19, um, what, what shall I say, 1972. Two, I think, something like that. I can't remember the dates anymore. Embarrassing, isn't it? This is a cowboy collection from 1975 when I went across America, and that's Tina Chow. This is a one-sided dress in a cactus print. This is Mexican sombrero and then there was a, this, was an, this was one of the dresses photographed in the New York Times talking about how my old dresses were collectible. This is the punk collection from 1977 where um, Richard Shara, the fantastic Australian um, makeup artist, um, designed the three eyebrows. And I used to go teaching with my eyebrows like that and wonder why people looked at me in Victoria Station. <laughs> and that's Little Nell from the Rocky Horror Show in one of the outfits. Whoops. That's me at that time. And then the punk wedding dress. There's, um, I have one of my own, and then the other sample was requested by the Met this year for the retirement of Harold Coda. Not very good at this. <laughs> this is part of the Elizabethan collection, and, in, and that's Dinah Ross in one of them. And in fact, um, it's going to be shown in the new collection at the Barbican Theatre. And I was explaining that, in fact, Vogue had said to us, would, would we design um, a garment suitable, in fact, for Princess Diana's wedding. So these are my designs. They were, needless to say, not used. <laughs> and that's an Indian sari collection. And the one nearest to me is called the Holy Sari because it's got lots of embroidered holes. 
and then there's the Chinese collection and the Manhattan collection. All of them influenced by different things at different times. That was the, the Manhattan collection from, I think, somewhere in the early 80s. And that was the Egyptian collection where I had them coming along as if they were hieroglyphics. Whoops, what's happened? Hello? Do I not? There we are. Spanish collection. Maybe I'm not holding it in the right place. Just hold it up there like that. No, it's all right. I think I'm okay. Spanish collection. Whoops. And the Indian, another Indian collection from 19, I think about 1986. Then what happened was probably towards the mid 90s, I thought no one was taking any notice of what I was doing. I was still doing collections, but they weren't being publicised or anything. And so I found this old warehouse in Bermondsey, which hadn't got anything going for it at the time. And some wonderful friend of mine, Andrew Logan, said, you've always kept all your clothes and you ought to do a museum. So um, I, I bought this, this warehouse it, when Bermondsey still hadn't got the shard and persuaded the top, ar top architect of Mexico to design it for me. And he came over and he designed the Fashion and Textile Museum. So, and that's looking at the mock warehouse that's been built on the opposite side of the road. And there's a blue archway in it. And a floor done by the top terrazzo artist of Australia, um, David Humphreys. And then I got Larry Hagman to um, unveil the um, signatures on the front. Oops, well anyway, poor old Prince, oh there we are. Um, so Princess Michael um, opened it for us. So I still had felt, still did a collection and I lived part of the time in San Diego, in what I call, sadly, the, the village of San Diego in California. And the head of the opera said, oh, have you ever done any opera? And I said, well no, um, I did once meet Zeffirelli and he said, would I be interested? But he never rang me up again. So he asked me to design the costumes for the magic flute. So these are the costumes that I did for the magic flute. That was the finale. And I designed the queen of the night and the queen of the night came down and again was in, I did a blue version of the Elizabethan costume that well, she came down in the moon and then by sort of trickery that we do on the stage, we made a cloak as if it was the night sky that came down with her as she came down on the moon. And that's her closely and it was in, she had pleated lurex and a moon for a collar. And those were the um, her other ladies and they were in, um, laced up bodices and then there's the magical bird man. Close up. I love working with opera because you have like a size 18 person that has to be really considered a size eight. And you, but it's great fun doing it. And that's the bird man again. And then he had magical feathers in his tail and his tail, um, looked as though it was made of ostrich feathers, but it was made by this very heavy plastic that they call weed whacker, which they cut the lawns with in California and stuck with crossway polyester. <laughs> and those are the, the magical... In, 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 in Europe, these would be little chorus boys, but in, in America, they had to have little girls that were strapped down to look like they were very flat. And then this is uh, Monastatos, who's the evil colored man. So I made him colored and he was blue. And he was given all sorts of evil points to wear. And again, in Mozart's time, he would have been the wrong color though. <laughs> and that was Sarastro with, with a sort of uh, punk hairdo and an Andrew Logan jewel round his neck. 
and those were the armored, that was the armored man that looks after the water. And the armored man that looks after the fire. Following on from that, they then said, well, we, we'd like you now. Would you be interested in doing sets and costumes for the Pearl Fishers, which is a small Bizet opera. Um, the poor man died penniless, having invented Carmen. And um, when, he, when he died, and it was a great success, they looked around and found that he'd done this really magical one called The Pearl Fishers that is really a delightful tiny opera and it's now done 16 towns across America. Sadly, it hasn't come to here. So those are the sort of vaguely the front curtain with the fishermen. And then these are different, I did the sets, so this is a rocky temple based on a trip in Sri Lanka that I went to. I was asked to go to Sri Lanka to judge Miss India um, with an audience of something like 15 million. <laughs> and, and they said, I said, um, is there a fee? They, no fee. So they said, but we are flying you business class on Arab Emirates. So I said, well, if that's the case, I do need someone to come with me. <laughs> so I took Andrew Logan and we did the that we did the um, judging in Hyderabad and then went on to Sri Lanka so I could check out that it was near enough to um, India so that I knew what I could play with for the costumes and sets. Just more drawings for that. And that's when the priestess appears and she has her um, sort of ladies in front of her where they, they bring her in on a palaquin. There she is. And that's the, um, the, the sort of um, poor old loser who loses the girl at the end, Zerga. He's always a baritone. He's not the, the tenor gets the girl. And, but this, this was the very first production. He was fully clothed. But we now play it with the man being semi-naked at the top. Whoops, where have we got to? There we are. And that's one of the priestesses coming in with the rose petals. And that's Layla in the temple. That's her praying for the pearl harvest. And then after that, I was asked to do Aida. And this was the triumphal march. This did actually also come to the English National. That's the Grand March. That's the princess and the, the hit poor hero who's going to be die. Early sketches. All the men were in gold pleated skirts and then they had um, ball pates which are like flesh colored bathing hats and then we painted tattoos on them. But I was able to use all the prints that I use in my other things. That's the... That's the um, Aida herself. And then once I started to do that and did the museum, suddenly people were interested in what I did. These are some of the things that I've done recently. <coughs> That's the one everyone always remembers. I did it before he even started to wear T-shirts. Bianca Jagger, and I've forgotten who. <laughs> this is what happens gradually. <laughs> Here we are, very quickly. Kate Moss. Experimentation. This was a set lecture that I had, you see, we cut bits out so that you could just see different things that I'd done. And then I got my medal. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>